Yeah, man. Welcome back to the Two Sides of the Game podcast with your boy Big Tone. My brother A Wax in the building. What's up, my guy, man? You know, some more love is there. We in this thing. Yes, sir. Hey, we turn it up already, too, Tone. We got over a thousand subscribers on the podcast channel that quick. Yeah, on a brand new channel, too, man. We started this motherfucker from nothing. We said we're going to start a whole brand new channel with nobody, no no subscribers, no nothing, and we gonna get this thing from the ground up, man. So I appreciate everybody that tuned in so far and subscribe. Salute to y'all, man. That's real love, you know what I mean? Looking out, I appreciate everybody jumping behind it and all the feedback in the comments and everything too, man. You're getting us, we gonna keep doing these things because we seeing the support we was looking for off top, girl. Yeah, and we got it, we got it. I know we both busy, man, so it is hard because we be trying to get in there and schedule, like let's get a podcast in and we both busy. So, you know, it's dope that we can set some time aside, get up in here, vibe, get these motherfuckers some game, you know, chop some bullshit, man, chop some some real game. We just, just you know, bounce them ideas off each other, man. Yeah. But like, but I was saying real quick, man, uh, 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 I was kind of tripping out. Um, I know we had some technical difficulties, but I was tripping out, man. I just did some traveling, you know what I'm saying? And, and uh, one of the dudes that was on the plane coming back from Europe, he was traveling, there was a tourist. One dude was from Germany, one dude was obviously from the Bay. And he was uh, giving us some some insights on what we have out here, bro. And it just really kind of sparked some new shit in my brain that I've been living in the Bay Area my whole life. And all the things he was telling this fo uh, foreigner dude about all the tourist attractions, I've never seen. Yeah. You know, my kids never seen. And I was like, you know what, man? It, I'm going to put on my tourist cap, man, and I'm going to get out here and, and explore what we got, man. I took my family. We hopped on BART, went out to the city, you know, hopped on a ferry, went to Alcatraz, did some little, you know, tourist shit out there, seen where Bumpy Johnson was laying his head, where Capone was at, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it was a trip, man. We have a lot of beautiful sites here in the Bay Area, and just kind of a lesson learned that sometimes we got to, um, you know, we take for granted what we have in our own backyard, you know what I mean? So it was a dope, dope experience to do that, man. So I figured I'd share that with people and share that with you, man. It was a dope. Uh, different, different insight on where we come from. Clam chowder on the wharf, put the seals and shit. Yeah, and I, we've always done, we've, I've done that shit a million times. Drove the pier, got some food and shit like that, but I haven't never hopped on BART. Um, and it's been 25 years since I've been on BART, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hopped on the motherfucking uh, Muni or what's them little uh, trolley cars. Yeah, smack down there, hopped on a ferry, and just, just shit like that, man. You know, ate a new restaurant out there and stuff. It was cool, man. It was something different, bro, you yeah. know what I mean? No, I mean, we, you know, it's easy to overlook all that too, man. We are world now. Our seafood's world now for the, the being right there on the pier and yeah. like Alcatraz Island is, that's really like a staple. It's on yeah. people's bucket list to go see. It's, it's the equivalent of, uh, of going to the Eiffel Tower or something when you're overseas. Mm -hmm. it, it's right up. People it's, flying all around the world to see that shit. We done drove by that thing a thousand times in, in, in our lives and just didn't even think about it. You, you been out there? I've been out there. I, I went on a field trip when I was a kid. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I remember as a kid going there, man. But as an adult, I didn't appreciate. I didn't appreciate what, what the story though as a kid. So I wouldn't have known. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything about who the fuck Capone was or anything as a kid? I might have, but not really known who he was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got to appreciate the history a lot more now. And you know another thing about Alcatraz, bro. Uh, the whole time I was walking on it when I did the tour, I was like, oh, yeah, I never would have made it. I wouldn't have, I, I couldn't escape, bro. Crazy. It was so cold with that breeze coming off the water and all that shit happening. There was no way in hell I'm finna try and swim that thing. I'll just do my life sentence and just die a whole man <laughs> on the island, bro. I'm not finna try and swim through no shark infested waters and all this extra shit. That's so crazy. I would have died an old man on Alcatraz, man, before I would have tried to swim in that water, them shark infested waters with that little raft made out of some. And you think that motherfuckers made it? You ever seen it every year? That I don't know if they still do it to this day, but they've always had like this swim run. I just learned that the other day. My they, girl was telling me about that. They get in yeah. wetsuits and they literally swim. Yeah. And have like a a, a boat following them and shit yeah. like that too. Yeah. So I mean, they do it. It's possible. Mm -hmm. it's, it's someone like me, uh, it's not possible for for sure. Especially yeah, I don't swim that good, man. I'd fucking for sure be at the bottom of that motherfucker. But I've been tripping on sharks and shit. I I, I don't even know if, if they got sharks out there like that. Yeah, I've been shark fishing out there for real. Yeah. What kind of sharks they got? Um, not hammerheads. They got like um, I don't want. I think they're tiger stripes, maybe tiger tiger sharks or something like that. I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know shit about sharks, so yeah. I know hammerhead. What I see at the hammerhead. fucking God's Nan, the little fucking museum and shit, and a great white. They got a little little doctor come underneath the bridge over there on the side of the Bay Bridge. You, I, we used to go over there and fish and catch sharks when I was young and shit like that. Not no big fucking yeah. great whites and shit. That sharks like this. Yeah, you get your hand eating off trying to catch one of them yeah, yeah, Bite the shit out your dumb ass and play with them. Man. Yeah, no, nah, that's something. Um, I've never been outdoors been like that, man. I can't see myself. I think I got 
you sat with me, you see how my mind works, but I don't know if I got the attention span to be fishing, bro. I'll be bored after the first 10 minutes. Like, the fuck is going on? I ain't been fishing. We shoot one of these motherfuckers to speed up the process or something, man. Yeah. I don't even enjoy eating that shit no more. I used to love going to the Seafood Festival over there in the pee when I was young and shit. But eating shark? I've eating tried shark, shark before. It's yeah. It's a alligator texture. The alligator too. I'm not a fan of none of that shit. I, I fucked with the alligator in Texas. Yeah. But when I ate the alligator at the seafood festival in Pittsburgh, bro, I got the worst food poisoning I ever had, bro. Right. That shit fucked me up bad, bro. They probably imported that shit from fucking Louisiana. So. It had to be. When the fuck we got gators out here? And got them. <laughs> got it. Came from Florida. I'm like Louisiana. a reptile in a fucking fish tank in someone's backyard or something. Yeah, I'm not a fan of seafood, but I I fuck with like. You don't like seafood? Seafood. Well, just not a fan of the texture of it. It's not, man. I'm not, I'm not my boy. Like tuna fish, clams, and pasta, like yeah. fancy shit yeah, that yeah. come from Italy. Like yeah. this is my grandmother grew. I grew up on comfort food. I fuck with that. Because yeah, I don't so. like no man. crab, no salmon, lobster no. tail, no shrimp. Boy, not a fan. Bro. I tear up some shrimp cocktails, man. Some lobster tails. I love crab. Just messy in the motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I don't like is scallops for some reason. I don't like the texture of scallops and um. And uh, what the fuck else? And uh, squid. I know it's a Mexican thing, the pulpo, but I can't fuck with squid, bro. Like even calamari, bro. Like octopus or squid, I really can't fuck with, bro. Like I could do the calamari, but that's forcing myself. You know what I'm saying? You was just overseas on uh, trying out all the seafood. You, yeah. You, you do the the taste comparison. You, you know. You know what, man? Yeah, bro. For so sure. like. That's everyone kept asking. Well, how's the food? Is it that different? Yeah. And it for so sure is because one thing I did notice is. I didn't get like, uh, I eat, if I eat that shit out here, bro, I feel full and bloated. Like, I feel nasty. You know what I'm saying? You ever eat and you just feel hella bloated and shit? Immediately. I don't feel that shit out there. You can eat that shit all day, bro. And it felt, because obviously their ingredients are fresh. I just made an Instagram post about this other day, and I learned out there when I was looking at their bag of chips and I was looking at their 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 food out there that lists ingredients. There's five, six ingredients in the motherfucker. You go take the same bag of chips out here, there's fucking 38 ingredients in that motherfucker because they ban a lot yeah. of that shit. And a lot of the shit's fresh out there, you know what I'm saying? So, all the preservatives and all the extra mm -hmm. GMOs or whatever the hell. The BHTs and the BTAs and all that shit, the hormones. It's really the preservatives, though, because we I understand business. You know, agriculture, man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a farmer, and obviously, in a different industry, but shelf life is important, and we got to feed a lot of people. You know, it's, it's a big process to get agriculture from their farm to the trucks to the stores, and then it's got to sit there and be fresh for a few days. So I understand it but it's still killing us, bro. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. different ways around it. But out there, I did notice the food did taste fresher. You know, it didn't taste so, um, like pizza out there, y'all hear it's greasy, shit falling everywhere. Yeah. There is, you know, obviously a little bit different. The tomatoes and all that are a little bit different, the cheese, um, but shit is fire, man. I, I mean, I'm I'm a steak and potato type of dude, so it I, took a minute to get used to it. I know the pork definitely different, bro. I seen a story the other day about Italy, they, they, they um, they grabbed a big, uh, one of the mafia families out there, they grabbed a big one out there, and apparently the the head dude, someone died in the mafia, and he stayed next door to the head dude of the mafia, and his wife, they was telling him to sell the house after the dude died. Yeah. It was like, we want to buy this property or something, they had a dude, and she was like, I ain't selling it for shit. So she just disappeared one day, and it, it's like 10 years later, they grabbed the dude, somebody was talking in jail and got him wrapped, and apparently, the lady disappeared and it's, a, it's like a thing in mafia culture that they kill people and feed them to the pig. Oh shit. So she disappeared and apparently some of the- pig feed. She was pig food, bro. Yeah, yeah. That pig got a different diet than out here, <laughs> man. It's like a natural- Kind of, it kind of tastes like Margaret a little bit. Yeah, it's kind of uh, part of their culture, man. You, you know what, bro, what's crazy is I've seen, I seen signs out there that, that said it, like at restaurants said, no mafia. Oh yeah? They would have signs that says no mafia. And you know, we, we do a little research, you know, we're tourists, man. I want to know a little etiquette and shit, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I learned you can't, don't, it's not it's not proper to order a cappuccino after 12 o'clock out there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they, they Their breakfasts and diets are different. They eat pastries in the morning and more more um sweet stuff, you know what I mean? They don't eat like bacon and eggs and shit like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Dinner's late, you know, they, they, they start late. They have like a siesta, so a lot of restaurants close like during the middle of the day and everything opens like 7.38. So all the restaurants don't open till seven seven on up, you know what I'm saying? Um, there's just different culture, like different different ways of living that just like out here, if someone came and did some weird shit out here, started dipping their French fries and fucking soy sauce or something, we'd be tripping out on them. You know what I mean? They have yeah. their own ways of doing shit. But um, you I didn't notice about that. that kind of stuff till you get out there and you're like, oh shit, I, yeah. I gotta I gotta move move away. I, I I really didn't give a fuck. I'm like, fuck, if I want a cappuccino, I'm order a cappuccino off of California. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But 
But yeah, you know, you still you still want to kind of learn the culture. That's kind of what I'm in it for, bro. I'm not. I'm going out there to learn other cultures, and I want to see different parts of the world. Um, yeah, I want to enjoy and, and see, you know, the new landscapes. But for me, growing at this age, I, I just want to. The new experience, bro, that's what I'm chasing. You know what I mean? Like, I get bored easy now, bro. We've been doing the same shit for so long. It's like, what's new? What's next type of shit? Little yeah. things like that kind of excite me now just to go see some new shit, try some new food, see, meet some new people type of shit. See, I'll be, I'll be a little leery too because I'll be fascinated with too much of the, like, I, I, I'm fascinated by just the mafia world. Like, I want to know show about too. that sign. They say a sign with no mafia. I need it. How do you enforce this yeah. sign? Like, that, that's where I was going to go to, though. That was one of the etiquette things where it's, like, rude to ask about mafia out there. Yeah. I don't know why, but this is, that was, like, a big deal. Like, like don't talk about mafia, about people, because it's, it's probably some street shit, you know? I mean, motherfuckers no, don't want to hey. come here and start asking me about some street shit, and who the fuck is you? You know what I'm saying? And I would be, if I was in the mafia and I lived like, there, who weren't you? I'd be like, I see the sign. I'm offended. Who put this sign up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we gonna go talk to the cook, man. Or that, or they really behind the motherfucker. I don't or know. they put it in the yeah. The Jedi mind chain. I, I really don't know. Like I'm, I'm like you, and I was infatuated growing up about the Italian mafia. So I know more of the old history. I would say more than the new. And you know, I know a lot of this stuff from Sicily and all that stuff. I didn't go to Sicily. I was more in the tourist areas. You know, went to Venice, Florence, Rome, um, the Mafia coast, beautiful as fuck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. It's like reminiscent of, of Mexico, how they like they underworld and they crime. It's like it's it's more com it's more comparable to to Mexico than it is to America to me. Like we got police is big out here. They come grab you and yeah. hundred of your friends and rico your ass up. Like yeah, not Mexico. Mexico is a lot more dangerous though. Like you you don't gonna see too many tourists going to. Me I mean, in Puerto Vallarta, Cabo, and those areas, of course, bro, but. You got to move very strategic in Mexico. You end up in the wrong spot. You know, I mean, they. I think they, they, they. To Americans and tourists, yeah, it's a little bit more hip. They try not because it's gonna cause a lot of undecent exposure. You know what I'm saying? But, but Mexico is different than than touring. It's his own Italy animal, shit. definitely. Yeah. But the, you got to respect game. Like you What's see up? the, the uh, peso pula. They they tripping on them and well, yeah. TJ right now they put signs up and don't yeah. do this show or you ain't it's gonna be nah, no last show. It's, it's real gang gangland out there. They ain't fucking around with none of that shit. And then you gotta respect it, bro. It's just just you gotta play by the rules, man. Just like anywhere, you come out here, you know there's certain areas they're really heavily active with shit. You know you you just like in anywhere. You go to Chicago, you gotta. There's gonna be places you move and, and places you don't move to. And if you move in those areas, you gotta learn how to move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Same with Mexico. I go to Mexico and been to Mexico. I got family in Mexico, a lot of family in Mexico. And I would go out there and I wouldn't obviously go out there reckless. I'd be very respectful and 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 you don't end up in the wrong place. You gonna cancel your show like Pace though? Like, man, I'm cool, bro. Like, you put bro, the sign up. Hey, 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 show, hey, 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 I don't give a fuck. Hey, I ain't too hard for the radio. If I was special pluma and these motherfuckers said this, I would hire every motherfucking goddamn security guard, every hitter I know. If I'm gonna do that show, I'm gonna say I'm hiring the army. I'm bringing the army. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But you going ready for war if you're doing that. Yeah. You, sure. you pretty much throwing the sign of war if you're about to do that. You know what I'm saying? That or you just be like, who I gotta pay? You know? What you need, man? <laughs> and somebody else canceled their shit like a week later too. So now it's now it's the one they're gonna keep throwing them signs up to someone called. Well, you know, phone. you know, you have you heard of Charlie No Sanchez? Uh -uh. Okay, so that's kind of they're bringing that back. So Charlie No Sanchez is a huge. Um, he's still to this day very prominent fucking Mexican artist. If you hear any kind of, it's like the original Corridos. Dudes and guys. So you hear his music. If you hear his music, you know who he is. I'm a fan of Charlie No Sanchez. They did the same thing to him, bro. They gave him a note. Said, you know, they gave, they saw on YouTube. You can look it up. They gave him his death note. Yeah. He got his note while he was about to perform one of his hits. He looked at it, bro. Rubbed his forehead full of sweat. Did his fucking show. Sang it like a G. Didn't fucking miss a tune. And um, I'm, I think it was after that show or very, very close after it. But I think it was right after that show. Supposedly got rolled on by 50. You know what I mean? And that was that smacked. You know what I'm saying? Um, game over for him. And, you know, he's one of the biggest legends to this day, you know, of one of the, you know, top of artists to the day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know a lot of the, the as far as the narcos, the narco corrido, they would make music and get paid by specific kingpins to do a song about this guy. So obviously the rival cartels want to get him yeah. clipped and all. Like I, I, I'm a little bit up on the game, but I ain't really know specific artists or nothing like that. I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even, that's not even a, a thing I like to stir up and talk about, to be honest with you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But it's you gotta respect it. They they out there different sections. If you're gonna rep this cartel and be in this part of town, it could be a problem for you. You know, not everyone's spot and daddy. You know what I'm saying? Just like you come up north, come up north, and you repping something down from south, it could be a problem. Where you go down south, repping something from up here, it could be a problem. You know, times are changing a little bit and evolved, but 
You, if you come from out of town, don't know our politics, it can get you wrapped up in some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just like we step out of bounds, I might not know. And even when I do travel in in different states or whatever, I do my homework. I try to tap in with people. Hey, this cool. I might sound paranoid and spooked, whatever you want to call it. I'm doing my due diligence. If I'm gonna stop here and have some dinner, what neighborhood am I in? What do I gotta look out for? What am I? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's just moving smart. You know what I mean? That's how you gotta move. I. I I'm fascinated on some like Grand Theft Auto shit. Like I know a lot, a lot of them songs I was just talking about. Like they, they talking about my boy Jaime grabbed the motherfucking rocket launcher and he fired it at the private plane and then we fed the mother, caught the wind, found the wreckage and then fed the song still alive. So we fed him to a tiger later. Like they rap, they sing about some crazy. Oh, they shit. Guys, these guys like, are rapping in, in it with a with a guitar and a motherfucking trumpet, man. Yeah, you know what I'm that, but they gangsta a different, a little different level, man. They a little next level on that shit. They, I respect it and just be like, well, I, yeah, they get away with a lot. No particulars and shit, but that's why I also know, like, whenever I'm in Mexico, don't bring no jewelry, don't do no, don't, yeah, yeah, avoid everything. I I went to TJ. You get jacked by the police before anything. I went to TJ one time and I walk, I, I'm walking, it's probably like me and six of my partners and we walking around where all the strip clubs is and shit. And it's probably a little, little dude, probably like eight, nine years old, walk up on us. He like, he he get at us like, hey, y'all need security? We yeah. laugh, we laugh and we grown and shit. Like, Look at this little motherfucker. Yeah, you better tap in more. Put a knife out. He, he pulled a knife, do some little butterfly knife moves and shit. I'm like, oh shit. Pulled the filet on you. I'm like, man, you're hired, bro. We in here, take this on though, bro. Stick with us, man. Come on. Like, act up, man, get on him. Yeah, you tapped in. Yeah, he yeah, it's your pass. He was a TJ pass. I respect it though, bro. That's what's he up. He want to sell chicle eggs, man. He, he, he's selling something else down there. Man, fuck them chicle eggs. Ain't paying no damn bills, man. Nah, bro. Yeah, bro. It's a different world, man. I, I'm, I mean, uh, you know, like I said, I think with anything, bro. And kind of going back to what I was saying, he went by here, bro. I never put on my lens of San Francisco as 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 that tourist attraction shit. You know, we know. You know the hoods. I know the the Mission District back when it was active with the with the. I mean, it still is, but it was it's, it's more gentrified now. You know what I'm saying? But when 24th, 22nd, and then you had the the the, the mother things down on 16th. You know what I'm saying? I remember you know the how they was you know how it was back then, and, and, and going to um, you know, like I said, the tenderloins are still kind of you know how it is, man. But I, that's how I picture Frisco. You know what I'm saying? Is that kind of city? You know what I mean? And, and like I said, it, but it's got so much other beautiful sides to it, bro. And that's same with the world. Mexico got so much beauty behind it, bro. You got it. I took my family to Mexico vacation earlier this year. Beautiful in Puerto Vallarta, man. Beautiful, you know. But across the other side of the tracks, it could be a whole different ball game. It's just anywhere you go, bro. Frisco remind me a lot of New York, bro. It's yeah. like a, it's it's the closest thing I've ever, I could compare to New York City. New yeah. York's like its own monster, and it's beautiful. It's like you go down on Fifth Avenue and see all those big stores, and you see a Foot Locker seven stories tall and all yeah. these stories you grew up seeing, but you see them, how big they are. And man, I, I walk for three, four hours, not even realize I'm walking and just walking around like amazed at all the, yeah. how big everything is and how they got it laid out out there. Even the cobblestone streets and shit like New York. I really, I fuck with New York heavy, but that San Francisco is the closest thing that I compare it to because it, it, as beautiful as New York is, it's grimy as fuck, yeah. it's rats, trash on the curbs and oh. all. I feel like every big city is like that, though. Yeah. Because you know what? Now that I'm looking at places to travel and shit, I feel like every big city is like that. Like, I, like you know, Paris, man. You know how people, Paris and that, but then when you start looking at our Paris, yeah. it's just as grimy, bro. It's got an underbelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tagged up every day. And Italy was like that, but when I pulled up in, um, at the, because we took trains out there, we flew into Venice, and as soon as we put the floors, tagged all over the wall. I'm like, I'm in Oakland, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look, just like the hood, but then it gets nice for you in the tourist areas. You know what I mean? I didn't travel off too far. And then same with Rome. Rome looks grimy as fuck, bro. Like hell attacked on the wall. And then you go to and then you see all the historical shit. You know what I'm saying? And then it's more historical. It was old, but it looked like the fucking hood. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you fuck you 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 up on the hooligans? You know what the hooligans is? Out? Uh uh. They, they call they call themselves hooligans. The soccer fans. Is it? Oh yeah. No. I, okay. So I was out there and um there was a big game when I was in um yeah I just forgot the in Naples Napoli. Okay. And that's where we flew out of. And that's like that's like the biggest city we've seen. That's kind of reminds me of like a New York, San Francisco. And they had a game, a big game. And one of the soccer players, I'm not gonna disrespect the culture, but he, they treat him like a god out there. He's mailed everywhere and shit like that. Yeah, he's like one of the biggest things. So the streets was, were kind of empty because there was a big soccer game that night. Oh yeah, and this they they different kind of sports fans than us. I gotta respect it. Like mm -hmm. you see, uh, uh, every week you'll see on World Star, yeah. It was a fight at this game or some NFL game. A couple people got in yeah. a fight or whatever. Out there, it's different, bro. They riding a train to the game. They fighting, hitting they each other. They're going to kill you over soccer games. Stabbing <laughs> each other. They in the 
in the uh, crowd at the game. It's sectioned off like how prisons is out here. They they go to watch the game, and this has got sections. They throw fire bombs at each other and shit. I'm like, God damn, this ain't, they got a vested interest in this shit. You think they they got some stake in this team? My boy got stabbed in the neck four times wearing the wrong jersey. Like, man, what's going on, yeah. bro? I don't think I could ever be fanatic of shit. You know one thing I did learn though, like off some history shit in, in Rome and it, and it, a lot of shit like you learn and it kind of reflects on things that are still current. Like if you you know read like 40 Laws of Power, all that shit's built on the old, old analogy that still exists to this day. Yeah. But uh, uh, one thing that like I learned bro, uh, we did the tour, the little tour with the thing. That's the only tour I did was at the Rome. I wanted to, to walk through. And, but that Colosseum, the emperor at the time used to host he used to, he didn't charge admission. So all the little things they're doing there, the killings and the, the hunting the tigers, all that shit that happened in there, the emperor would give free admission because the sole purpose was to, sh that's where he was able to do his propaganda and, and, and kind of brainwash his people for whatever he believed in. Yeah. And yeah, his main purpose to them was distract them. Distract them with this, so I'm gonna build this Colosseum, distract the people while we can get away with everything else we're trying to do. And it's no different than a lot of the shit today, man, where everyone's so distracted, our phones are paying attention to drama, what's going on with this, and there's so much. And I'm not one of those dudes that's like all into that, but I see it happening. Yeah. You know, we don't even focus on the real shit that's happening because we're so worried about what the fuck is going on on Love and Hip Hop or what's going on on fucking Kardashians or football, even sports. And I'm a, I love sports, you know what I'm saying? But we are distracted on so much other shit where there's a million other things going on, you know what I'm saying, that we overlook. Yeah. So. It, it comparable to how it was back then obviously was a little bit different but it's similar to this day you know what i mean yeah i i it, it, I, I get it too it's like it's an overwhelming thought even to think about like and then you know rebellions popping up or nothing against everything because like we can't even we pay just in our country how much you gotta think how much money we pay for, as far as taxes we shell out and we don't even get transparency on where our tax dollars go like I, fucking 50 billion a year dismissing on the defense <laughs> shit yeah. missing and there's not even an explanation it's nah. like it just is common business because we're distracted yeah ain't nobody give a fuck but we and we don't know where to start if we do want to let's exactly. say if i was mad and i was like man i don't want to know where that where that you start poking the bear your ass end up fucking dead like, yeah, <laughs> you're gonna end up in a jail cell so hunting yourself questions. you're gonna end up like epstein you're gonna be somewhere with epstein what? island so i like i said man it's 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 real, you know, if you want to poke the bear and, and want to get to the bottom of it, I'm sure someone will answer that fucking door, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, they got something for your ass, man. Yeah. I, I, I know you can fuck with that Airbnb shit, too. You seen the, you seen the other day, they got this uh this lady squatting in this mansion down here in L.A. in Brentwood? Bro, bro I've seen that shit, people standing to me. She, uh, so she ran the Airbnb when I'm, I'm assuming, and she said she wanted $100,000 to be relocated or she ain't leaving. Yeah, she ran some. Yeah, she she so, hunkered down. She, she didn't drop the anchor. <laughs> that's the only difference. I got an Airbnb. You pull that shit. I'm not. I'm taking law of my own hands. I'm about to get up in that door. I'm gonna grab your ass out that motherfucker. <laughs> Look, take your head. Take your ass out. And them locks are getting changed. You know what I'm saying? I'll deal with the consequences after that. <laughs> she like counter suing and talking about he released stuff in the air that made her sick and with the cleaning and it wasn't cleaned right and she doing all this kicking and screaming. That shit crazy. You, you know, I I ain't like one of these dudes. That, you know, I got older, so obviously I think different. But this is a respect thing. It don't matter what, you know, that like petty crimes and big crimes, whatever, but the 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 cornball shit, the cheap shit, the scammers, I can't stand that shit, but I just yeah. don't respect it. And that shit's going on out here, but you got so many little fucking sleeves bag, little sleeves balls doing so much petty shit, bro. It's fucking it up for it. You don't even realize they're fucking up a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like soon there's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna, it's gonna be ugly, bro. It's, it's not ugly. even like she's somebody like down bad or just someone that coming from a, a fuck up situation. She's like a prestigious school grad real college graduate like harvard or some many shit like ivy league graduate Damn shit, ivy league squatter yeah she like in well informed she might have a law oh, degree she, 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 she oh, and then you know what salute to her because she know the law there she said you know what i'm gonna use no different than what trump and these motherfuckers are doing with taxes and all that shit they yeah. they utilize the, the they, they they utilize it if that's the law now they, and it sucks man because if they start utilizing this shit people are gonna take notes from her and start doing that type of shit. Exactly. And then what's gonna happen? It's gonna crumble the motherfucking Airbnb business and people who ain't gonna wanna invest, you know, in, in their homes and doing that type of shit. And it, it just fucks shit up at the end of the day. It's protecting, in my opinion, the wrong people. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of the business. Now that I'm a businessman, you know what I'm saying? Now that I'm a businessman, I got a different, I got a different- outlook. Protect my motherfucking money. I come from a different background. You ain't squatting my shit, bitch. I'm gonna get your ass. <laughs> yeah, if I, if I can't carry you out myself, I'm finna go hire some, mm -hmm. finna go hire some little ski masks. They gonna escort 
you off the premises. He's going to be escorted respectfully. Yeah. <laughs> respectfully. Or respectfully. Possible. Respectfully as possible. I could fix I could fix some broken windows and and uh, some of that shit to get your ass out, whatever. But I ain't paying no hundred thousand to be locate your ass. Damn, but nah, it's all good, man. Fucking uh, yeah, nah, I, I would I, I'm too uh, too old school when it comes to that shit, bro. You playing my money, man? You fuck with my money, you fuck with my emotions, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get I, I get the same way, man. Yeah, man. But uh, you seen that shit? You seen that shit? Uh, Kevin Gates having a fucking concert. He brought this chick off stage. It's all over social. I'm sure people seen this, but had this chick off stage, bent her oh. face over, and just spit a fucking look. You just, and she's in there. Guzzling, uh, I could have. I could have went all day without seeing that shit. Fucked up my old. Yeah. I immediately want to uh, see that shit, man. I, but I, I don't. I, I need it. my life back, man. I need Who seconds back, man? I did not want to see that. I seen it too. I seen. And that's you seen it? Yeah. That, and now, now that whoever that chick is, you got to live with that legacy. Ain't you that girl that? <laughs> that, that you you famous for all the wrong things, man. What was you thinking up there? You don't, your, your mama ain't raised you better than that. Like goddamn, you don't know where this motherfucking mouth been. You <laughs> first of all, so, and know and all the shit he be talking, his mouth done been some spots you ain't trying to <laughs> be a part of, man. And Boy, you got his dude, cousin all in your mouth. You got all kind of other shit, you know. That, he, he a different breed though. That kid. and he, is he doing, didn't he say that boy like getting pissed on? Is that him or is that someone else? He like he say he like getting pissed on. He like and he wanted he been, he was in a relationship with his cousin for a couple of years. He like incest, piss. He like everything that's taboo. He all you know what? Fuck. I didn't know all that, but you know what? I I like some of the songs before, but I think I'm unlike every one of those. Let <laughs> know. <laughs> you know, fucked it up for everything. If Kevin Gates ever come on. Sorry, my boy, that shit's getting skipped. <laughs> all good music ain't good music, man. We gonna just get. It's your own by this one, man. It's a you, know, game. you know what's fucked up though, bro? I feel like the uh the artist I think and, and it, it may it may be fucked up, but I feel like people have to do that shit now to stay relevant. You know what I'm saying? They have to do some fuck shit these days because attention spans are so short and having that talent that like that's longevity. There's there's some artists out there, but it's far from few. I feel like so many people get a spotlight and they feel it dimming away. That they panic and they gotta do some fuck shit like them goddamn like them also goddamn God's name but like the Miley boys fucking making out with each other I mean, brother yeah. that little bullshit I feel like they everybody got to do some weird shit whether it's dressing up funny or doing some fuck shit well it's always it's the same recipe the recipe been there forever Ozzy Osbourne bit the head off a pigeon yeah. when, you, when you in the shock value is where, where you get your check from. You always got to one up your shock factor. It don't matter if you're Super Dave and you're jumping off the, the, the off of a over the Grand Canyon on a motorcycle or you're Red Bulling off an airplane. You always got to one up your next trick when when that's what you do. And that's yeah. the that's the that's the cold part of that's it. That's the easy way to yeah. success and fame or fame, not so much success. That's the easy yeah. way to separate yourself from everyone else who's working hard. But like me and yourself, we we took the opposite road. We never was doing the stunts and the, well that's just to me that's a short term a short term um buzz you know what i'm saying unless you are really gonna keep one up on yourself like if you're the island boys and you start and, and you know, you go from singing in hot tubs to kissing your brother what's your next move i don't even want to know it i don't want to know i don't want to know i'm not next to in it but whatever it is how it's got to one up to kissing your brother it's gonna one up that thing bro and it's gonna be some out of line shit you ain't got Man. too many places to go left though because you done left you done did so much now. I'm so glad I'm from a different era, my boy. <laughs> boy, man, that's when that's when all them all them all them young all them young cats telling them old 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 jokes like, oh he oh yeah. I, I, but you know what's fucked up? All right, this one. I be old. I ain't no island boy. Uh, Keefy D. Yeah. Ooh. Now you got an old school head. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that might have been to somebody back in the day or whatever. But look at him now. In my opinion, and I didn't do all my research in the case. I seen it just all over the headlines, like the people. But what I'm taking from it is, back in my day, youngster. Yeah, I smoked two pot. You know what I mean? Me and my partners, you know, whoop the whoop. But but talking without trying to say too much, because that's what he's doing. He could have just kicked back and shut his fucking mouth. You know what I'm saying? I'm a Tupac fan. I love Tupac music, but I grew up on that shit. You know what I'm saying? So outside looking in, right? I see the story like everybody else. I see it unfold. I seen the interviews too over the years. Vlad TV, he's doing all these different camp components and shit. And he he talking about it and he he, he telling his story. Yeah. End of the day, what why you I step back and I remove my how I initially perceive it and I said, why is he doing this, mm -hmm. bro? Why is he doing it? Anyone know that you ain't 
he obviously ain't stupid. He was a big drug kingpin. He made his maneuver through the streets all these years. He's still free. He ain't sat down for no substantial amount of time. I seen hundreds of cops giving Vlad TV interviews uh, affirming his, he was somebody in the drug world. He got gotcha. big dogs. See, I didn't know his history like that. He dealing with Puffy yeah. and them. He one of the, they, they, they touted him as one of the biggest drug, uh, was or drug sources. No, back in, in gotcha. the day, Dave, when this Tupac shit. Back in my day, shit. Yeah, he, he had more bread than Puffy and them when he was gotcha. doing his thing. So I'm like, why would he be doing this? And then I seen a, I seen some other, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of Tupac documentaries and For stuff sure. hit, out, yeah. hit out there. When I seen all the police, um, the police involvement in this whole Tupac Biggie story, and I seen like FBI was following him and they had surveillance on him on the night he died and they had surveillance on all these things that they're doing. They have actual camera footage and there's officers that are implanted in death row, federal officers that I've are seen all that shit, yeah. faking in there like, all that involvement thrown into that story and redacting all, like they got the, the files released on it from the FBI, but they redacted huge portions of it. Officers' mm -hmm. names, how many officers was there tonight when Tupac died and all this shit, like their involvement. And then I hear Suge talking from jail and he's like, yeah, the police, this is police shit. Mm -hmm. Like he basically saying like, if I'm Keefe D's lawyer and I'm coming into the situation, all this, I'm redacted all this, this is his defense. Yeah, yeah. He could have just spun a story, no, Tupac death one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in American and modern American history. Yeah. I could spin this story and say I did some shit I didn't. I'm a celebrity overnight, I'm paying my bills. If 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 I'm Keefe D and I put my feet in his shoes, and I know I ain't had nothing to do with Tupac killing, but they was accusing my dead homie. Mm -hmm. But I know the police did it. And I lie to tell the story and get rich off of it. It's no different than whack 100 than them and being anti on the internet and, yeah, yeah. and stirring shit to get their money. Like that, it's just shock value. You shock yeah. the world when you say something like that. But now you play. That's a slippery slope. Yeah, yeah. Now you got to deal with the legal ramifications. You got lawyer bills, all the shit. But let's say hypothetically he take this to the trial. Let's say he beat it. Yeah. Let's say he beat it and some information unearthed in this trial point to the FBI or something, hypothetically, let's just mm -hmm. say this happened, right? He gonna come out, what's gonna happen? His yeah. pockets is big. Oh yeah, that's some big dice to shake. It is, yeah, it is, a, it is a big gamble, man, but yeah, that's a risky one. But that's kind of going back to, like you said, to a different era though, man. You don't expect that from an old school cat. You no, know you what don't. Saying? If he was cause, 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 you, Cause it's going back to, yeah, if you was that big dog, back in your day, you had that money and you don't have it now, that's making you desperate to do some shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, you didn't do no, you you had your time, my boy, okay. And I don't take nothing away from nobody, man. You did what you did, but don't be back in my day type of dude. That's where his mindset might be. You know, I might have done this. And I don't know, dude, and that's just me speaking from the outside looking in. I me, would, I don't I don't I don't respect that move, you know, especially nah, especially respect. two especially, you know, Tupac, you know, such a big legend, you know what I'm saying? That's such a big, a big, uh, a, a big uh it's gonna be a big headline, you know what I'm saying? But, it, it, and, and I don't know, like, the depths of it. Like, you know, I do remember seeing the documentaries. I remember seeing, you know, them talking about the, the LAPD was involved in yeah. the, the 96 Impala, you know what I'm saying, that pulled up and they found that in the dudes, you know. I see, I've seen all the documentaries and shit, so they yeah, were leading it, it toward like, that. It's, it's definitely not respectable what he's doing on any but, from my stare. But you know what, bro, you, that's how shit is, bro. No, no different than, like, when Nipsey R.P. passed or, you know, Anything that happens, bro, people always think it's something bigger than it is. When you, when you were out here, bro, in the streets, in, in Vegas, no different, bro. It can be that simple. You might piss off the wrong dude here or a fuck you to this dude and that fast, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it should be like that. So it could, you know, bro, bro got into a dude at the casino, whipped his ass, and dude came back, pissed with his homies. It could be, it's probably that simple. You know what I mean? It, it, it It's more than, it's more than less respectful, though, and more respectable what he do, because you got to think. If he a shot caller from actual, he, 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 by all accounts, he a shot caller from a neighborhood in Compton, right? Yeah. He done sent his whole neighborhood under him. He done sent him on drills. He done had him doing, if he big dope deal, he probably had him dropping, busting knocks for him, doing all this shit for all these years. And then that turned over to, when you the old head from the neighborhood, now you you dry snitching on Puffy. If Puffy, you, if Puffy didn't, uh, uh, allegedly Puffy, was going to pay him a million dollars to get Tupac killed. And he's saying this, mm -hmm. Puffy stiffed him on the bill. If he did, it didn't. Now you trying, you shooting a lot of attention on Puffy. Puffy doing good in life. He'd probably do a lot of good for a lot of people. I don't know about Puffy life specifically, but you're going to dry the snitch. And how you going to one of Puffy parties? <laughs> I'd never go to Puffy parties. You hear about that shit? 
Change the whole subject on that? Listen, bro, I'm not a part of Puffy Parties. I'm not an island boy kissing my brother. I'm not doing nothing. And hey, that boy 50 said, he said he won't go to Puffy's party because the puppy will hug you from the front and the back at the same time. <laughs> at the same exact time. Listen, no disrespect. <laughs> Man. I ain't gonna lie to her. We'll find out Wax chilling at Puppy's party. Bro. Nah, was, like, <laughs> my man Bistro, shout out my man Bistro, bro. He did security. He, he called me this morning, too. He did, like, security at a boxing event the other day, and it was, like, uh, Mike Tyson and, and uh, uh, um, Sugar Ray and, and like, it, it, Michael Phelps. He was just kicking it with a bunch of celebrities. He was like, I was like, you text pictures? He's like, nah, man. He's like, I got the pictures in my head, though. I was hanging out with him, and, like, these people I grew up, like, idols and shit. But he... He do a lot of security and he in LA, so he um he's done some of them puffy parties. Puffy hired a lot of people from his neighborhood for security. And boy, I don't even want to hear the stories or re repeat the stories I hear from them. They like, man, man, fucking repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, listen, man. I'm just gonna say puffy, puffy ain't got no morals, man. All them man, all them naked basketball games at Jamie Foxx house and shit. I'm cool. I'm on my name Ben and I'm on dance videos to tell you enough though. I know my boy Baby Bash, one time I told Bash, bro, I was like, Bash, man, you, you, what you doing, bro? You got hit records and shit. And he was like, Wax, I hate this shit. I was like, what you mean? He was like, bro, I go to these meetings and, and, and with these big record labels and I'm I'm like excited. I'm like, I'm, we gonna put my next move out. I'm gonna drop my new hit. And then I sit and then I go into these meetings with these big rich label executives and shit. And then they say some weird gay shit to me. And I'm like, man, I'm cool in this industry, man. They're like. I'm gonna do it. My, I like Bash. You get sexually harassed at that meeting. Yeah, they sexually harassed my boy, man. They make tell on Bash Lenny. He like man. He like man. I don't swing that way, bro. Yeah, I'm not. Got my money fucking with these bitches. Hey, you know what though? I will say just real quick, man. Bash probably like one of the most humblest dudes I've met. That is he? Cause, cause, cause and I, I and I'm going back to now. He's obviously on you know like legend. He did what he did, but at the time where he was still you know. You got your, you got your, where you're building your legacy, and then you got, all right, cool, now I'm chilling, you know what I'm saying? And he's, his show is still selling out and shit like that. Yeah. But you always commended him because he was like one of the, and, and I would say Mexicans that went mainstream because there was a lot of Mexican artists that were successful. You had a lot from LA or here, you know, people that were big independently, but that was the first one I seen that was mainstream. Song yeah. T Pain, Akon, you know what I mean? All over. Nice. And, and, and to get to that status, bro, and bro, to be that humble, like he don't, come across as a rapper. Like he, he nah. makes him proud that he never- And he's a fucking magician, bro. Like think about this too. He he pulled the greatest trick in, in fucking Hispanic music ever. Like he's from Northern California. Everyone think he's from Texas though. Most of his family is in Fresno. Yeah. Got on in Texas and has a, a bigger fan base in LA. Yeah. All the places that don't get along with each other, he's loved in every single market. Yeah. And, and, and politics never hit his Radar, he rose right above him and mm -hmm. found his lane right, right, right above the politics. Mm -hmm. Fucking magician. Yeah. I, I said that too. He was probably the only artist I knew, and especially at the time when it was. Now it's a little different. He was the only artist I knew that was getting away with fucking with both sides of the politics yeah. up here, like you said. Does he really be with him? He be yeah. with him. Of course. I know. I, I fucked with him. I mean, I fucked with bro. And, you know, I never had no ill feelings to be like, oh, you fuck with that. Now, maybe if bro didn't fuck with no one up here, fuck with no one up here, yeah. it'd be a different kind of story. I'm sure there'd be people in their feelings up here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, but that's smart, bro. Like, you don't have to involve yourself in people's politics just by fucking with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I do that. Like, if I go and work with a, um, I know you got different politics, but if I go work with a blood or a crip, I'm not gonna, I'm not, I fuck with you, I'm not a fucking Pyru, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You you fuck with me, you ain't a motherfucking homeboy, you know what I'm saying? We just, you know, we obviously click more and could we fuck with each other, but I, that's smart as a business person. You don't wanna subject, if you're a real business person, you don't wanna subject yourself to one group because it's gonna be limiting for you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you break outside the box and evolve. Now, if that's who you wanna be, Cool, but we know that's gonna put a limit on us. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're gonna have to move different certain areas. We're gonna have to do our due diligence when we move around type of shit. You know what I'm saying? If we live a different kind of lifestyle and different background and they could come back and haunt us if we don't move right. Yeah, I know. Hats off the bash, man. Even down to like the the South Park Mexican, like, you know, Cali, like in, in Texas, I be in Texas too. I, I used to go to Houston way back, right when South Park like, Mexican went go to down. Jail. Like, Already. bro. He's really like a fucking cult culture icon, a Houston yeah. icon out there, bro. So I'm talking, about, I'm talking about South Park Mexican. Uh, like he's really, really, really big, and I don't think people that ain't never been to Texas and had like 
they feet on the ground out there, understand how. He's like big. the Mac Dre, like Mac Dre. We praise he's like big that. like yeah, that, yeah. bro. He's big, like how, like, so a lot of Cali artists I see is always a constant argument. Well, he's a, he did some sex offender shit, yeah. right? Well, in Texas, it's like Tupac. Like Tupac went to jail for some sex shit, but we all say that shit ain't real. Yeah. Like that's how they look at South Park. I think the only he's, thing that holds him, like for people out here, is because he got a young girl. Pre or even though the story issue was at a strip club, I understand it. How you yeah. didn't know if you're a strip club? Last thing you think about carding stripper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think I would know. I have a kid, you know, young daughter. I think I would know it if I seen a 14 year old girl. Me personally, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I, but I don't know his story, his situation, so I don't ever touch on that because there's we're just from the outside looking in. You got that jacket on you. We're from California. It's bad news, no matter what. Yeah. We from a different way of living and growing up. But you're right with Tupac, Mike Tyson, all these people, Kobe, all these, any stars, Our heroes. Like, yeah, heroes. but but see, that's that. It is fucked up. Yeah, you're right. No, I just think about that way. I'm not weighing in either because I really don't know the details on bro's situation, and I've been in jail with people where they he was. One of my boys one time was 17. They had a baby with a girl that was 15. They went to high school together. Everything was cool till he was like 23. And then the, he fell out with the girl and the mom filed on the old, they had a baby and, and the mom filed for her being underage. And he went to jail for a sex offense. And yeah. Like there's situations like that where I don't really count it, but I know how to, system is and how some people is just as yeah there's offense, a difference if you're offense. a 19 year old and she's 17 and a half okay it, i'm not saying yeah. it's right but there's a difference versus there's 30 year old man fucking with a 14 year old girl grabbing, you know yeah saying? grabbing someone up or preying on kids like yeah. there's definite levels to it there's a gray area in some situations but those are you still don't want that jacket on you in california definitely not bro you know definitely I mean? not so that's why i'm saying we live by a different set of rules and and you can and, and and success does attract uh, 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 people, you know, a lot of. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, when you're, and I think a lot of people learn from it, because like I said, you know, Tupac, Mike Tyson, I think even Kobe went through some shit like that. You know, um, I don't know if it was the. Uh, it was a rape accusation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Denver, Kobe went. So, through. so it's it's the easiest thing for you. Hey, I know you're worth fucking fifty million, and um, you you know, it's easy for a woman. That's your come up right there. You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting next to my fucking. My uh, the rest of my life, my my financial aid right here, my 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 future. You know what I'm saying? I could from I, I, like some bits and pieces I gathered too about the scenario, like being around Bash and shit. The girl that was underage had that worked in the strip club had a fake ID that said she was 18. Because gotcha. I always like I remember before I even got out of jail, I seen like South Park Mexican got a universal deal. I, I'm pretty sure it was the same time baby and cash money did. It was like yeah. a comparable deal. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a substantial amount of money. It was like unheard of. They was like independent majors overnight. They deals were so big mm -hmm. as far as SPM and Birdman's deal. They both hit around the same time. So I, I know he was rich as fuck. It ain't like oh, he wanted an underage girl or nothing. He was he was balling like him. I, I did. I heard that story too, where he was he was uh, uh, blackmailed. If you don't pay us this amount of money, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna um, say this happened, this and that. And he was like, "Fuck you! I didn't do shit. I ain't paying shit." And and already, you know, when they on you and the police is on you and you're making noise, you're a brown Mexican, blowing up, making more money than anybody out there. And maybe you came from a certain part of the game where they couldn't get you on. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I could see that happening. You know, I think, and like I said, that's why I don't speak on it because I don't know the facts. I remember hearing yeah. that about people when I'm in Texas. But like I said, I think what, where people do fuck it up is why you did get a 14-year-old girl pregnant. But there might be those A's. She was in a strip club with a fake ID. You know, you look young. So that's just that's just that thing. Kind of like no different than, I mean, it is a difference, I guess. But like R. Kelly, bro. R. Kelly was known for <laughs> have liking young women yeah. before all this shit came out. Yeah. But but I'm just saying, though, kind of we should have seen the writing on the wall. You was fucking with Aaliyah when she was hella young. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden, okay, all this other shit came out. So obviously that attraction, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's such a level of cherry picking because <laughs> you say that like, I mean, Jay-Z and them was fucking with Aaliyah. All kind of people yeah, was fucking I, with Aaliyah, underage asses. Like, I mean, in the stories, allegedly, in the in the pictures, in the stories. I gonna do Jay like that? <laughs> I mean, like, I'm, some of that shit didn't not like with that. that I didn't know about that, to be honest with you. I don't, yeah. I seen a lot of it like through the years, man. I, I, culture has definitely changed. Oh, for sure. Against that shit. I mean, shit, bro. Like back, in, never... back in the day, like the old cultures, bro. Girls used to get married young, especially yeah. I think Mexico. Mexicans used to do that shit, bro. They married girls like a sixteen. You know, they'd get married to shit and stuff yeah, like that. I, I couldn't even. It, I know some states have laws like that, like you can marry a seventeen-year-old with their parents' consent. Shit, I'm anti that shit. Oh no, for sure. Legal. Fuck the laws, like oh, fuck.
Man, I, I ain't got no business with no. I got a 16 year old daughter, man. Shit, though. Yeah, what? All that shit. God, Tim Bone Boog. <laughs> They're two, two peas in a fucking pot. <laughs> <laughs> two peas in a fucking pot. They don't even laugh. At least Tim Bone laughs. Are we boring you that quick, baby? I need to smell quick. <laughs> I see steam come out of his ear when we talk. It's just. <laughs> His face he was hella red in the first yeah. now. Fuck. <laughs> Never laughs at nothing, bro. <laughs> Fuck you gonna try to shake me. No, now he laughs. That's, that's a psycho laugh. Bro. You gonna try to shake me in my sleep one day. It's like you fucking ass. You're laughing about it now, watching this shit come out insider edition. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Fuck, I had a, I wouldn't even say a name, bro, but one of the homies I used to fuck with real close. That's why we fell out. You said I was mean to him and shit. <laughs> You're mean. Bro, I, I believe in tough love. I, and, and you know what's fucked up? Like, I had this talk. I'm not going to put this on blast too much my personal, but I had this talk with, like, my, my daughter's mom about my kid. You know what I mean? Like, we got two different ways of raising. I'm very tough love, but not, like, mean. It's just the real world. Stern. Real. But no, I just understand the way the world is. Like, People these days want to be sugarcoated. You know, oh, you're mean to me, this and that. If I care about you, I'm going to, and this is, obviously I don't got all the answers, but I've been through some real shit. You've been through some real shit. We know how life can catch up to us. So if you want to sit there and play like this shit doesn't exist, what's going to happen when someone you care about has to go through that shit? They're not going to know how to handle life. Yeah. It's going to crumble them. People crumble. They get in these depressions and they get in these things and they don't know how to handle life and they get all fucked up and then everything fall apart because they can't handle it. I'm one of those people where it's like, Look, prepare yourself, understand this is the way it is, so hopefully you don't have to go through that shit, but when it does happen, you know how to handle it. You know what I mean? One thing is, when we're here, we're resilient because we've been through some shit, we're still standing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We've had all odds against us. You know what I'm saying? And this is going some street shit. You've been to the pen, you know, I ain't been to prison, but I've caught my cases, I've had motherfuckers try to kill me, I've had, you know, been through my shit in life, you know what I'm saying? Survived a lot of fucking ups and downs and hurdles to get to this point, still being solid, good name, respectable, and, and successful. You know what I'm saying? It took a lot to get here. Those are bumps and bruises that I had to learn and endure. So I try to feed that off to people. Like, it's not always, you know, uh, I've been blessed. Like I said, I haven't been to prison, but not to say I was an angel. I had, I got partially luck, blessed, and all that. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. there's ways to move. There's ways not to move. You want to survive and win in the game? I try to help people with that. And if it's sometimes not what you want to hear and it hurts your feelings, then that's what it is, man. You're like, yeah, you know, when you're young, it, you don't. Yeah, a lot of times it's not that they don't want to hear it too. When you're young, it's, it's it's peer pressure, bro. If the people, if 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 every day you wake up and you hang out with the same eight people, and all these people is bank robbers, hypothetically, yeah, you're gonna probably be involved in some bank plotting or something, or something along those lines. If that's who you're looking up to, you're trying to impress these people. Like, you have to separate yourself, or at least. Move smarter, you know what I mean? Like, that's a short path. But you might have to learn, you might have to get popped, go to the feds for 10 years, and it come out, and then you start thinking that way. Yeah, because people, when you're young, you don't want to learn from other people. Yeah, exactly. You want to go learn from your own. You don't want someone to But tell. if someone usually has somebody that they care about, that they respect telling them, they might listen. Because yeah. usually it's somebody like, oh, I don't do that, you know, somebody they don't respect, you know yeah. what I mean? That's the difference. You know, I look at it like this, though. All right, say this example. I got this kid here, right? Likes to pop pills, he likes to drink every day, eat a bunch of bullshit. I'm telling him, stop eating that shit, but you're gonna fucking kill yourself. You're getting fat, you're getting out of shape. All this stuff happens. I call it, I believe it's this thing called the compound effect. Excuse me. All this shit, you're fucking yourself up, right? I don't wanna hear that shit. It's fucking smacking cheeseburgers, chicken 40, whatever, popping all these pills, right? What's gonna happen? He's gonna get all fucking fat, he's gonna be out of shape. One, you ain't gonna get no women. Women ain't gonna like her. You ain't gonna get a good, good quality woman. You ain't gonna pull no females looking like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Two, if you look like that, who's gonna wanna do business with you? No. You know what I mean? You're like, you're setting yourself up for your future. Who the fuck's gonna wanna work with you on anything? What kind of business relationships you gonna build when you're that type of dude? Yeah. So you, you're gonna have either an ugly, fat baby mama that look like, that resembles your ass, and you're gonna have some bum ass friends because they doing the same shit you're doing. It's then you end up attracted. Then it's you end up attractive. getting later on, you start becoming more depressed because shit ain't going your way. You don't wanna do this, but things ain't happening to you because you're this individual. Now you get a health problem. Oh, my fucking kidney's going down. Oh, I gotta go on dialysis and all this shit. Now you got. All this stuff is happening to you, and then it's going to hit you one day. Like, damn, I fucked up. Maybe I should have lived different. Yeah. Instead of, like, bro, you're fucking up. You're a fat piece of shit that's popping pills. Get your shit in order, and you wake up young. Then you go to the fucking gym. Then all of a sudden, you start looking better. You get a better, beautiful woman. You get a better opportunity because people start fucking with you. You present yourself better. Life will go a whole different way if you take care of yourself. And sometimes it takes a motherfucker like me to, a motherfucker like me to tell your ass that. 
put you in fucking gear. You know what I'm saying? I believe in that tough love because that can change that person's life. Yeah, and it's, and it, even without as much as you talk um, inspirational shit and you give people game too, it, like it don't take a fucking rocket scientist to just of look at the so. situation from outside in and see. Look, uh, Tom got his shit together. If he talking so much, I should probably listen. If I want to get my shit together, same with Wax. He got businesses. He got his shit together. If I want to. If I want to get on their level in life and I'm not doing that good, I can listen to when they talk and not just talk like I know it all. And I could probably come out of this conversation with some game and some insight that I can implement into my own life, go somewhere with it. And it, it's the company you keep is is a big thing. Like if yeah. you can't recognize that and pattern recognition and put those those things together and what you do in your daily day to day, what you choose to do with your time every day, your free time and how you company you keep circles you're in things like that and see if you can't put it together and implement it into how you move then you, you the odds is, is terrible well, sometimes it's the environment you know okay it's easy to like you said it's not rocket science it's easy to tell somebody this is what you got to do but okay if your your money ain't up and you're you can't afford to go change your group of friends or whatever like that and you're just stuck in a situation then that's kind of going back to that's who you built yourself to be, and that's kind of where you're at. They don't know where to start. And that's what I be teaching motherfuckers. Rewind who you are. Don't sit there and take what you are right now. It is hard for you to meet new friends and deal stuff because you no one else, you don't have nothing in common with no one successful. Not anyone could just come chill with me and you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got we gotta respect that individual. If you're gonna sit down in the room with us, we gotta fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not that dude yet, go become that dude. It's <laughs> not that hard. Like, like it's it is it's hard, but it's not. Go become that dude. Take your ass back in when no one's looking. Stop hanging out with your bum ass friends for fucking six months. Get your ass in the motherfucking gym or go study on some fucking whatever business. If you want to say you want to sit in a room with me and you and get to at least to this level, then go go work on your music. Level yourself up. Come talented. Do something where we're going to look at you and be like, bro, you're dope. Just kick it. Just work. Just do something. Yeah. And what any business you're in, if you want to go be a fucking guy, anything, it's Put yourself in that position to be that dude. Then your opportunities will arise. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I got a little extra, like, asshole in me. Like, I, I, I don't feel, like, bad for people when they're going through shit. Like, my family members and people that, when they're going through bad shit, like, I be with my boy Brownie. You know Brownie. Yeah, yeah. He's oh. in a fucking wheelchair. Yeah. He, he's fucking... Make shit happen. He, this motherfucker will go shoot a music video, record four songs, edit a video, shoot a video for someone else, go over, fly to overseas, go give out shoes to the homeless. Like in a week, the things he gets accomplished is fucking mind blowing. Drives a car by himself. It has to go through all the physical therapy. He'll go to a pool. He got cares. People being rude to him about just doing physical therapy in a pool. All the things that he goes through just to do simple things in life. And then you got people out here, poor me, what was me? Exactly. Oh, it's so hard for me. I can't break out of this mode. Yeah, I'm tired. Oh, yeah. Like, and my legs hurt, my back hurt. That shit <laughs> got just, a headache. When I, when I, I, I have to sit back and I see, when I see people doing that, like you got functioning limbs, you got all the world of opportunity right there at your fingertips. And it's the same as being in jail. Like uh, there's people in jail, like, I, you know how many times I heard people say, man, I cut both of my arms off to be free. People with life sentences and mm -hmm. shit. I give an arm and a leg right now just I to believe be free it. back. And there's people out here with their freedom and it's like, oh, it's so bad to be free and out here in this world fucking bitches and I just ain't got all the money and everybody isn't. Like, what, what, what? Put well, this shit in perspective, man. Like, I do, and I do. What you say about is what I preach. And that's why I always say gratitude. I, 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 and, and this goes back to, go back to what I was saying traveling earlier. We don't even appreciate what we have our beauty around here and the stuff we do because we're so used to it. Yeah. So you to wake up and have your legs, you to wake up to have your vision, your hearing, your your. And I always said this is you know I'm not super religious. I, I don't like read the Bible, go to church, which I'm I, I I should probably I don't know, but that's not what I'm I do. But I do believe, like I said, we're so intricately intricately designed. You know what I'm saying? And I've said this hell of time. Look at look at how you're drinking that right now. Your your brain told your hand to grab yeah, up and drink up. How your body's all this button, you know, drinking it and sending signals from here. All that your 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 ears are listening to the vibration of my voice. You know what I'm saying? Everything's fucking intricate. Look, well, we engineered to perfection, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Most of us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most of us. Not everybody. <laughs> everybody. <I'm... laughs> you know, I work hard over here playing now. But uh, you know what I'm saying? Though, just just the way we're designed, bro. We take that for granted. You know what I mean? We 
You could lose that any day, man. You could lose these limbs like Brownie and my boy Ricardo, same thing, man. He he got paralyzed jumping into a pool and, and, and you know, went paralyzed from here down. They said he wasn't going to be able to use his arms or nothing. He's pretty much going to be like um, Keanu Reeves, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and nah, bro, he, he's a fighter, bro. He's driving yeah. around, he's moving around. You got to get the same thing, gets in his car, mobs around, hooks his shit up, then let that stop him, you know what I'm saying? He still goes on to his normal life and his kids' lives. I'm like, bro, you got to be a strong motherfucker to do that. And we motherfuckers are getting up the press, can't get out of their bed because what? Because whatever the fuck. And I don't want to take away depression. You know, that's that, like but... kicking people while they're down. Some people is genuinely go through mental health issues and struggles. Like I, when I was younger, it was a lot of people, I, I used to sell dope and there was a lot of people that was like Vietnam vets. And they was different mm -hmm. from a, from just a regular, um, someone on drugs, just like I'm just in the cycle of For sure, yeah. drugs. There's everything. levels to like it. There's people that really seen some horrible shit in Vietnam and some of these wars and had to live through it, and they just get high to forget mm -hmm. some shit they seen and they can't unsee it. Uh, a million different things that happen in their life. I get mental, I get that part of addiction and I get the mental um, the mental health. You're just not strong enough mentally or something ain't, something ain't clicking like normal people, so you're stuck in that in that thing. And, and I, I'm... I'm sympathetic towards that. I understand that. that's different. That's different circumstances. Some people been through some fucked up shit. Yeah. And, and there's stuff that we can't relate to. They've been through worse than right. any of us could imagine. So I understand that. You and, know what I'm and, saying? And I I don't ever want to come off as judgmental on that on, on people like that. But like people that like everyone go through shit. If you just went through shit like everyone else doing this, not no crazy. I think people use that as a crutch. Yeah. I can't do this because I'm depressed. You know, or I, I can't go to work or I can't make some shit happen or I'm, I'm losing everything. I don't I don't want to do no business or whatever because I'm depressed. People use that as a crutch. Like looking down on the working man, like, oh, he working McDonald's. Like, yeah. but you ain't working no you ain't shit. And, you, know, you know what? One thing, like I said, I, I listen to a lot of different people. I listen to Red Books. I listen to, from rappers to 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 uh, motivators, whatever, just different people. One thing um, Andrew Tate said about depression and he got backlash when he said, like, depression isn't real. And and I don't believe that. I believe it is real. You know what I'm saying? I believe that people yeah. do have feelings. We get fucked up, but I think yeah. we feed into it. But he said something that really makes sense was like, it depends how much you believe into it. So if you have one guy that believes his house is haunted, he believes in ghosts. He's going to be scared at night. Y'all, I'm not, my house is haunted. I can't sleep in here. You know, I'm, I'm fucking wigging out. I believe in ghosts. Yeah, but then you got the same guy in the house that doesn't believe in ghosts, you know, in the same house, he's going to sleep like a baby. You know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't believe in ghosts. He's sleeping. Fuck that. This house ain't out of fucking ghosts. He's going to sleep like a baby. You know what I'm saying? And then one guy's scared because he can't sleep in the same house. So it depends on how you think of it. You really believe, hey, I'm depressed. I can't do this because I'm depressed. And you feed into it. Yeah, it's going to affect your life. But if you're going to be like, we all have our ups and downs. I don't know if I've been depressed or whatnot, but there's times I feel like shit. Everything's been going bad. I lost a lot of money. Things ain't going good. But I fucking, you know, Ed her, I'm fucking I'm feeling I, whatever the fuck, right? But you know what? I still got up and made shit happen. Yeah. I didn't sit there and let my fucking feelings just, just, just lay there and die because I don't <laughs> yeah, feel well, fucking. I feel sad. You know what I'm corner yeah. and just forget my life. I've lost a lot of money before while I was balled up in the fucking corner. Oh yeah, depression real, bro. <laughs> I lost everything I got. <laughs> hey man, I, I, when I get when depression hit me, bro, I, I, I try to condense it, bro. I let it. I got to control that shit, but that's where mental fucking fitness comes in fucking play. I, I let, I, shit have happened, or depressing shit, I let it, I brush it on the rug, brush it on the rug. And then when it's a big mess, I let it all hit me at once and I be like, I have a fucked up day. Like, man, I'm just, I need a reset day. And that's the day I go do some shit like you said. Yeah. Just go do some regular tourist shit, reset. For sure. Fuck work for a day, fuck money, fuck all my responsibilities. Do something. You find you find something that works for you then. I like that. Because I do that. There's days I'm not feeling like certain, I feel like like some kind of funk or something. That's my outlet. To take the family out and go do something. That makes me feel better. You release some yeah. kind of endorphins. Anything you can do to release your endorphins, bro. Yeah. Whether I, my thing is the gym, and doing things with my family. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That helps me. But like you said, anything to find to help you is you, you gotta know, find those. Coming out of doing those, taking those days too. Sometimes I might take a weekend, I'll go somewhere, do whatever the fuck. But it, it, at the end of my reset, I feel like the 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 motivation I need to get back to work too. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, I've been missing work. Everything they fall apart in a couple of days. Yeah, I got a bunch of calls I gotta return and mm -hmm. emails and shit like that. But yeah. I'm gonna catch up and then I work. I work double hard and I catch up and I get things accomplished like that. I go through that too. There's days I, I, I notice that and I, I, I 
there's a couple of days where I do feel down like that. And usually it stems, my shit usually stems from like business being slow or up or something down. Mon money, sometimes if a lot of money comes in, it's my mood will change, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. But not all the time. There's other shit factors. But sometimes I'm like that. Like, I don't know why everything's good right now, but I still feel kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? I don't know from maybe past, shit, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like that. So if I do have a bad day, I don't know what it is. I'll have like one real bad day. The next day I'll, or the next day or two, I always like, it goes from like one, I, then all of a sudden I'm like, damn, I feel good. I trip out. Like, damn, I got a good day. I'm feeling good. I wake up motivated. I'm making shit happen on the calls, on the phone, boom, 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 inspired. So every time I'm, something's feeling like funky, it always follows up with a good day. So almost when I have a bad day, I kind of excited. Like, yeah, I know a good day is coming tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get my shit yeah, back. Oh, man, I, I'm chill today. Let's go. You know, I, sometimes I do that. I'll put off phone calls because I know they're going to fuck up my vibe. I'll put off certain certain conversations or certain type of people till I have to prepare myself for certain shit. You know what I'm saying? I'll do that to the next day. That's not good always, but hey, a lot of times I'll do that. Have you ever done some shit like this? This is I, I, I'm just... I'm sold on this shit, right? Every time on some financial shit, every like I don't do, I don't go out and do like toy drives and shit for the public and record it on my social media. Yeah. Like any, anything I do charitable, I don't advertise it. I yeah. just, and it's not, I think I think it's a good thing to advertise it because it teaches other yeah, yeah. people to do it. For sure. Not to stunt in people's face, like look what I'm doing for this person. This turned yeah. to other people in a good position. You should do this too, yeah, yeah. play it forward. So I, I, but me personally, it's not for me to advertise it. I'm not yeah. just not a fan of doing those kind of things. Every time I do good shit, like I pick a Bulldog Foundation, ASPCA, and go find some homeless people and throw some money at them and do little shit like this. And every time I do a move like that, it, within a day or two, a, a pile of money fall in my lap yeah. on the other end. Ten times what I, the more charitable I am, the more money come to me in a couple of days, for sure. bro. And I, I be amazed at this shit like clockwork every yeah. single time. Sometimes it's just putting money on my homies' books in jail. Uh, they going through something, someone got died, uh, funerals. Like, I can't tell you how many times, like, young rappers from out here have died or whatever the fuck, and I throw five, six hundred toward yeah. their funeral, toward their family afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I don't say nothing about yeah, it. Yeah. And just tell them, look, this for me, this ain't for advertisement and shit. Not uh, Some rappers I never met and don't know them and shit. Just like, that's cool. And that's a fucked up scenario, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, Things happen like that, but it always come back and and, and it, it, you know what I karma that what you put I, out, I say that is I don't but I I don't I don't believe in you do good and get good right back. I think it's just the energy you're putting out, bro. Because yeah. people do that just to if I go give this homeless man twenty bucks, then I go play the lottery all of a sudden. So that, oh, it doesn't work. Yeah, it don't work that no, way. No, no, you're like doing that, that shit because you generally like enjoy doing that. That's why it comes back. Because I feel the same way, bro. Like like I do. I do. I, I don't. I don't do as much charity as that as I should. Maybe because you do a lot of extra, like help do that shit. I do a lot of good, like just just simple helping people out, bro. Like I'm very, uh, very generous when it comes to helping people out. Like, I feel bad for certain things. Like I give money to do. I always give money and do little things and help people out, bro. That's just how I I feel. So I do feel like it comes yeah. back so much. Uh, it, it does always come back, bro. Um, um, but I think it's not just the actual act of you doing that. It's just where your heart is at, bro. It's putting out that energy. Yeah. You're actually genuine about it. Yeah, so that's why we get blessed in return. I don't look at like charity as just money too. Like if I see an old person struggling carrying some for groceries sure, to the yeah. door, I'm gonna help them. Yeah. If, I, if it's a lady trying with a purse trying to get to the door, I'm gonna come open the door. Open the door for someone and then they don't say thank you, then my turn my attitude turns around well then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I, but I say it when I'm walking on. I can't stand that shit when you let someone in the lane, get in and they just don't say thank you. That shit pisses me off. Yeah. I'll start pulling up on that. Mother <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm very, like like I said, I'm very helpful like that. I'm very polite, bro. Very polite. Please, <laughs> thank you. Especially because I know I'm an intimidating looking dude for a lot of, I'm six foot four. I'm a big dude, bro. I know yeah. people look at me crazy. So I try to use, like, I try to smile and shit now at people. And I try to, hey, how you doing? I try to change that around, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, and, and, and I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a big tipper, you know it's what I mean? Be a bad like, dude. like it's I tip really well. Way. I tip really well in restaurants. They do good service. I always bless them, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um very polite, I'm, I never try to be a pain in the ass unless, I treat people how they des deserve to be treated. Yeah. They come respectful and they're just trying to do their job, I'll treat them like, you know, very respectful. Like yesterday I was on, um, took my kids out and there was a kid serving us ice cream and he was kind of rude, like you can tell he hated his job. Well, I was fucking being rude to his ass too. Yeah. I'm getting, fuck that, you know, you don't, you don't wanna be here, you wanna treat your customers like shit, I'll treat you like shit. You're very respectful and you're a good kid, I would, I would put a big fucking tip in your tip jar, you know what I'm saying? So. If there's one place on earth that you could get away with some Saying something slick to me, it's at a restaurant, bro. Like, 
I'm so paranoid. Oh, hell, such a phobia with somebody doing something to my food that even if, when I, I, I bite my tongue before I say something back, I'll just be like, you don't know what they're going to do to your shit back then. Listen, bro, you going to get that off, bro. You just, you got that little attitude, that little tone of voice. I'm going to let that shit slide until my food is across that counter in my hand. After that. Then, then the gloves is off. You check this out. Man. Until that food come, I'm biting my <laughs> Look, tongue and I'm. You're going to get all that off till that order is done. No, because. I, that drive me crazy when I go through the drive through with some of my homies when we eating on the road or something and, and somebody say something slick or someone trying to put their sense of humor on while they ordering the food. Like, nah. I'm not eating this, Kelsey. that food. What is wrong with you, bro? How stupid is you? You finna catch an attitude while they making our food. You know. Uh, like, come I, on, I, bro. I got two things for that one. One, real quick to go on what you said. Have you ever seen that movie? Uh, oh, fuck, I just forgot the movie now. It's wait, Waiting or it's, um, you know, a movie was. It's called Waiting, the restaurant movie. So you didn't ever seen that movie? What's what's the dude's name? That's um he plays that action character. Um Brown Ray Ryan Reynolds. Well, anyways, they live in a restaurant, nasty. This chick's being hella rude and they take the food back and Parmesan cheese, blah, the dude cook fucking pulled some fucking uh, fucking pew bears out, put it in there, spitting it, did all this shit and gave it to her, right? And uh we were at a restaurant in uh I don't even want to throw this restaurant on the bus, but we're in San Jose, I was with all the fellas, we walked in kind of late. And I was like, but I don't like walking in before they're about to close, especially yeah. a big party. Everyone was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're about to get off. And they were cool. Like, yeah, they're looking at the fuck. All right, we can see each other. I'm like, damn. I'm like, the, the waiter ended up being hella cool. I'm like, bro, I, don't, I really don't like eating restaurants right now. Bro. And then we're talking about that movie. Long story short, he goes, yeah, that shit's real. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I, I tell you, it's real. It's just gone. Luckily, he was being hella cool. He's like, nah, you guys are cool. You coming in hella respectful, bro. When people come in here barking orders with this and that, yeah. all this shit. And I was like, damn, he confirmed it. Karen McClendon. And, and now going back to this, have you ever been to a restaurant with Wood? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> have I. But Wood was, bro, bro, he was, all right. So I just remember one this and this, bro. We're at Applebee's in Antioch on Hillcrest. And we're sitting down to have dinner. He orders the fucking fajitas, right? They bring the fajitas. He's like, nah. I'm like, what you? He says, nah. <laughs> He's like, bro, they're not sizzling. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what you mean? He's like, bro, if you tell the waiter, they're not sizzling. He goes, bro, that took the whole fun out of it. I ordered the fajitas because I wanted the sizzle to come. He wanted the show. So he wanted him to go back and bring them sizzling, bro. I'm like, bro, you are definitely fucking up the program, bro. I'm cool with my food. He's like, nope, go take the fajitas back. I want him to fucking come back sizzling, bro. Nah, we well, definitely had that, that, that white entitlement shit to come out. He was a whole Mexican. Through and through until it came to some shit like ordering food. Or yeah, he was an asshole with that one. I, I fucking love him. He was an asshole with that one, but he said, I want my fajita sizzling, bro. <laughs> I mean, it was funny to us at the time. Like, and he, and the way he swagged it was kind of, it was funny, bro. Like, it was more like we were kicking having a good time, and he wasn't like, let me not throw the mood out. Like, he was just like a demanding little fucking Karen. He was just like, nah, bro, I want my, it's fun. You brought the fun out. We're kicking it. The fucking fajitas come out sizzling, and, and it was cool, bro. He went through the little. Came out and sparked the whole fucking uh, he was, vibe over. We used to eat a lot of pizza, and he was a couponer, bro. So I, I didn't see him. When they didn't want to take the couponer, it was expired. Oh, yeah, he'll run back in the house, find one without an expiration date, and talk shit the whole way there and back. But the yeah. food was already prepared, so we was good. I don't know. I just remember that, bro. And I was like, yeah, man, I got to watch out when I go out to eat with that boy. Yeah, you don't fuck around about his food, man. Yeah, you, you, yeah. But that that was one memory, bro. That motherfucker was pissed off as for eating his sizzling, bro. <laughs> I would have let that shit slide. I would have let it slide. I'm like, oh man, it's Applebee's. But it's the little, Applebee, I mean, Applebee's was like, that was like the place to eat. Oh, back shit, then. that was the that kicking was spot. The, yeah, that was the, the shit. Uh, the, uh, before, like, before when we got a little older, and that was like the meetup spot, because everybody would go to Applebee's and kind of eat there, drink at the bar, and kind of figure out what you're going to go do that night. And you'd yeah. bump into anybody at Applebee's. It was a, it was a kicking spot for a minute. Yeah, that bitch was lit. Man. Now, we was happy with that with that motherfucking menu. Like, oh man, this good shit. Oh yeah, we thought we was balling, man, with that steak and lobster over there, man. How long we in on that motherfucker? Point ten. It's just a cool little segment. I'm going in. We can chop his there. That's what I'm saying. Even like even, comfortable now. Even, even 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 if we, I like it better out the mics too. Yeah, me too. The mic yeah. make it feel like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope the audio sound I cool. Feel like we have a. I feel like it's more like how we kick it when we're in the studio. Yeah. The mic make it feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's something about. 
throw throw right. off. Yeah, we're off, bro. I, it's more comfortable for me. We kind of forget we're fucking filming this shit. This, now we're gonna be on here. We're gonna fucking have a uh, wood was a Karen. <laughs> wood was a Karen. Listen, man. <laughs> hey, what though? I'm I don't one hundred, bro. You, I had that. I remember. I remember that motherfucker, bro. He was really. But like I said, bro, he, it, it wasn't like it wasn't like a like a awkward. Like he was yelling at dude and like throwing off the vibe. No, you he, know, he was like a cool dude about it. Like, come yeah, on, bro. My fucking shit ain't sizzling, man. That's just the fun yeah. part, bro. Come on, my shit ain't sizzling. He didn't just be like, hey, hey, you fucking bitch, make my shit sizzle. He, he, he had a sense of humor and he was fucking educated. He knew how to break your balls and talk shit to you without making you feel belittled or nothing to it at the same time. Yeah, he wanted, he wanted the fun. He was like, man, he took the fun out of it. Took, I was excited. You <laughs> fucked my excitement up. We was having fun, man. I want my feet in sizzling. We was having a good vibe. my excitement, bro. I need to sizzle. <laughs> man, I know uh, JoJo has uh, man JoJo. If you see this, I need a picture. She found a picture of me. She took a picture um, of a picture, but it was hella blurry. She's like, I took it hella fast, but it was a dope picture of me, Wood and um, JoJo. I was like, man, I need that fucking picture, man. That shit was dope. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that kind of threw me back because I love seeing. I don't back then it wasn't like now we have our followers and shit. So to have like media and pictures and it wasn't so um accessible like what it is now, you know what I'm saying? Somebody had to actually bring a camera back. Yeah, and it was a disposable one most of the time. Those little, remember those disposable ones? You had to take the fucking Walgreens or Longs or something? Yeah, yeah, bro. And then everyone see your pictures before? I'm, I wonder how many people uh, I know that <laughs> did that shit, that printed the pictures? I'm I wonder how many of them bust they out. That'd be a dope picture if it wasn't blurry. Yeah, that's dope. That's like, that's his work uniform, that jersey. That boy, I love that jersey. <laughs> That and that flannel, I gave him that flannel, that, um, that pro, I forgot which one it was, but I gave him that little flannel, bro. I was like, here, bro, you want this? I don't, I don't like the way it fit me, man. That motherfucker rocked that shit all the time, bro. That shit was his main, you love that motherfucker. When people call to develop pictures and shit. That's a, that's a to expose the, the, um, the one hour photo dudes or the yeah. exposing dudes, the, uh, exposing the photos? Yeah, that's a cold job, man. I mean, shit, man, you know what you're getting yourself into if he's putting some shit in there, though. Imagine that when he, every, every time somebody open went to, Develop wood pictures when he dropped the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, shit. <laughs> like, listen, I'm going to need a couple copies. My boy Wood was a Scorpio. Just that's enough said. That boy was a Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> Two copies for whoever ordered them. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, there's probably some shit floating around. Fuck. Right there. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Damn, that's, that's you know, we from throwback, man. One hour photo. Hey, oh, man. I, I, I was in a. Uh, I was in Walgreens the other day. I think they still no. They do my um. Uh, my girl was printing hella pictures. Uh, she just did that the other day. She um, she uh, took some pictures, printed them, edited them, did it in a frame. They still look good. You know what I mean? Because people don't do that no more. So she printed a bunch of pictures from like our vacation and stuff like that. Because it's true, we lose our phone. We lose. You know what I mean? It's iCloud and shit like that. You know what I mean? But we don't have physical pictures no more like back in the day. You know what I'm saying? So it's smart to do it if you want to keep your mementos and your memories. You know? Yeah. Man. What you think? We think, got him? I think that was cool. I think just whatever, anything we kick the dust here could be still some content. You know what I'm saying? What you want to do? You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I was. I wanted to do an outro and a wrap up to mm -hmm. a little bit. Outro. I was wrong. Two Sides of Game podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast episode, me and Big Toe, be sure to like this and uh, comment in the comment section. Subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate it.